But first, tomorrow marks the 10th anniversary of the bull market run. And back then, well, the experts were sort of uh, bracing for more carnage, not this run-up. Think about this. Ten years ago, the Wall Street Journal had a headline, New Fears as Credit Markets Tighten Up. And economy slides as we argue over asset valuations. Then there was Barron's, ouch, that hurt. CNN, Dow, uh, for the Dow, another 12-year low. It was bad news and bad news and bad news. You know, you would think it was the beginning, not the end, right? It was the beginning. It was the beginning of a great ride. Here now to discuss Mahoney Asset Management President Kim Mahoney, along with tax and financial expert, now author of the new book, Positive Financial Karma, Look at that yoga pose. Dan Geltrude is with us. All right, yoga man. <laughs> Should we be calm and tranquil right now? Should we get into our, our, our you know, yoga pose now? Yeah, lotus position. I think, <laughs> I think we can stay calm, even though the waters are a little rough this week. I think we're okay, Charles. You know, these, these bull runs are supposed to last about five years and then just kind of die off. We're on 10, and I don't see anything fundamentally changing that in the near future that's going to change the trajectory that we're on. So, so you're saying the bull market doesn't have to die just because it's, it's, uh, it's old? No, it doesn't. And I, think, and I think we're proving that right now because we have doubled the mark of what the average bull market would be. You agree right. with that, Ken? Yeah, look, March came in like a bull. It's going to come out a bull. There's no doubt about it. We had this pullback. Come on, we're overbought. Whether you use oscillators, whether you use put call ratios, we're really overbought. We're due for some correction or at least some, some consolidation. When, when, you know, the, when sure. guests come on, and <clears throat> this week especially, a lot of people have said correction. Now, you're talking in a, in a sense of a 10% pullback? No, I, I think it's shallow. I, I think kind it's kind of, of shallow. Here's the reason why. We have a lot of cash on the sidelines. We have money managers still having this performance anxiety, so to speak, uh, who are behind the averages. And even if they're bearish and even if they don't like the market, you know, you have 11% up you know, through January, February. They have to put money to work. So I think there's a pretty good bid on this market here. Look, th this selling that we've had this week, it's been pretty orderly. It really has. There's been no really spike in the VIX. It's been pretty orderly sell-off that we've had. And it is week. interesting. We find buyers on the downside. And we find sellers on the upside. So, but to your point, the equilibrium hasn't changed much, and it just feels like we're waiting for something. But what do you think that is? Well, in my mind, there's a number of things that could happen, Charles. But in my mind, there's two big things that could have an impact. One, we do not get a deal with China. And by the way, I think that we will. And you and I have talked about this. I think we will get a deal. But if we don't, I think that could have a significant impact. The next thing interest rates with the Fed. You know, people don't talk about how much corporate debt is out there. It's higher than it's ever been before. It's one of those dirty little secrets. And I think if interest rates go up, we're going to see some serious issues in the market. I'm glad you brought that up because um, Jay Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, is on 60 Minutes this weekend. It's a, it's a, a huge platform. Some are thinking that uh, he may take this as an opportunity to, to join on what's in this bet now, it's just called inflation averaging. It's a policy being put forth by Fed President Williams. And essentially, they deliberately allow rates to go, inflation rather, to go well above their target. And they might actually even cut rates to help that happen. You think that could happen? I think it's possible. And I also wouldn't discount the browbeating that he's taken from President Trump. I can't imagine that hasn't had some impact. Of course, he would deny it. And everybody wants to think that they would be separated. But I don't think that it is. I think it has had an impact because after the last round of, of Trump tweets, he did pull back. And the question well, look, is I, th why. I think it needs to pull back because of the data. I mean, at that time, from the yield curve, the credit spreads, to oil imploding, to everything that's going on around, if you really was looking at the data and be data dependent, you know, on, on December 19th, he wouldn't have raised rates and been inflexible and impatient at that time. Thankfully, on January 4th, at the Mount Rushmore of Fed governors or ex Fed governors sitting there, you know, he came to realize they had to be more flexible, more patient, right. and let inflation grow a little bit right. and cutting it off at, at, at the pass. So right. you're saying that was a rookie mistake? Well, yeah. I, yeah, you can see that, but there's a lot of collateral damage it caused sure uh, for it. a so-called rookie mistake. It was expensive. Ken, Dan, congratulations on the book. Thank yes. you, Charles.